Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Finn Scales and Fluffy Tales. My name is Bryn, and today I am going to be sharing some information with you that I have discovered over the past four years of me um, researching this topic. Um, as most of you know, I do not have a dog, and you know, I really want a dog. I have wanted a dog for what seems like forever. And because of my life situation, I was not able to get one. So I decided to do a ton of research. And this video is called how to get a dog and also how to find a good breeder but I am definitely making this video in two parts. I'm gonna be releasing it in two parts, but I'm gonna film it all at one time. I had to make notes for this video because I knew that if I didn't make notes that I was going to definitely ramble. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. So how to get a dog. This is a very controversial topic in the pet community, if I'm being honest, because a lot of people don't do any research before they get a dog. They just go out and get one. They just buy the first dog that they find online and you shouldn't do that. So you should care about where your dog comes from, how your dog is raised. And I see too many YouTubers and influencers who buy dogs from really not so good places. Most of the time it's backyard breeders. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you the differences between puppy mills and backyard breeders. And I'm gonna explain what they are and I'm going to tell you how to spot one either online or possibly in person. Puppy mills and backyard breeders, they're not the same, but they're both not great places to get a dog. So your first question is, what is a puppy mill? A puppy mill is an operation that exists for the sole purpose of breeding dogs and selling puppies. That is it. So these dogs that are involved in puppy mills are often severely neglected. Um, the person who is supposed to be taking care of them doesn't groom them ever. They never get taken to the vet. They don't get walked or socialized. Some of these dogs have never even touched grass. Um, they do not live in the homes of the people who own them. And you know, they normally, like when you see them online, they will go into shelters being completely matted from head to toe. So normally the veterinary staff there will have to completely shave these dogs down because there's matted fur all over their bodies, especially for like, you know, small dogs, like long haired breeds and stuff where they're supposed to be brushed every day. But obviously these people did not take the time to do that. These dogs are usually, dogs from puppy mill situations are usually fearful because they're not socialized ever. And um, it's just a really bad situation. Good breeders care about the breed. They are not in it for the money because after doing all the regular health testing and stuff that they do, the puppies, even though they're more expensive, the breeder still doesn't make hardly any money on the puppies they sell, whereas the puppy mill doesn't give any care to the dogs that they keep, so all the money that they're bringing in is profit. So your next question should be to me, like how do you spot a puppy mill? How do you know if it's a puppy mill? Well, the first thing is, pet stores. Puppies in pet stores come from puppy mills and the reason is because good breeders do not sell puppies to puppy mills. Um, the definition of a puppy mill is that if there are more than two breeds of dogs being offered by the same facility. So if you are online, you will see they, and they make it look super professional, but they will have multiple breeds 
I came upon a puppy mill site, which I'm calling it a mill because that's what it was, but obviously they make it look super professional. They have really good pictures on there, but they offered French Bulldog, Shih Tzu, Havanese, uh, Yorkie, maybe even miniature, like Toy Poodle. Those are just five of the like eight breeds that they offered at that one facility. That is a puppy mill. If you go to a show breeder for a puppy, they will never breed or show more than two breeds at once. From puppy mills, you can buy the puppies. They'll have multiple litters on the ground, which means the litters are already born. The puppies are ready to go home immediately. And they're just trying to sell, sell dogs. And another telltale sign is they don't let you meet the parents and they also will not let you see where the puppies are raised. Um, and that's because they don't want you to know how they keep their adult dogs because if you saw it, you would be mortified. And obviously puppy mill dogs don't are not health tested. The adults are not health tested before they are bred, which is how you help to eliminate the health problems that some purebred dogs have. And another telltale sign of a puppy mill is that they will breed their bitches every heat. So the puppy mills will breed their bitches as soon as they come into heat and they will breed them every heat, which is not, which is very bad. And normally after the female gets so old and it can't produce puppies anymore or it's too weak, they will dump it or kill it. And most of the time they won't take it to the shelter. They'll just dump it somewhere or they will kill the dog themselves because they don't want to deal with it. And like I said, they do not, usually you should wait until the dog, the bitch, not the dog. You should wait until the bitch is two years old before you even think about breeding it. But as soon as they have their first heat, which can happen at like, depending on the breed, anywhere from six months to a year and a half, they're breeding them. So that is my best definition of a puppy mill and how to spot one. Backyard breeders have some similarities, which I will be pointing out, but they, do, they are slightly different. So a backyard breeder is someone who has pets and decided to have a litter, but they do not show the dogs and they, the dogs probably weren't health tested before they were bred together. And the difference between a backyard breeder and a puppy mill is that usually the backyard breeder cares about their dogs because this is their pets. So a lot of the times they do care about the dog that they have and they care about the mom, they care about the puppies, but they either didn't know enough or they didn't want to do health testing on the parents. The important thing is they are not affiliated with the American Kennel Club or the United Kennel Club or the Canadian Kennel Club or whatever country you're from and they don't do health testing on their dogs. Most of the time they do not. So how do you spot a backyard breeder? So one of the biggest telltale signs of a backyard breeder is they will post ads for their puppies in the newspaper or somewhere like Craigslist. Not only will they post ads in the paper or Craigslist, but they will spread the word through like word of mouth, like, hey, like they will talk to you or you will find out about it because people are talking about like, hey, so-and-so has a litter of puppies. Do you want one? Do you know anyone who wants one? And things like that. Backyard breeders um, do not have a waiting list, which puppy mills usually don't either because they have plenty of puppies ready to go. Um, backyard breeders also do not do health testing on their adults most of the time, which puppy mills don't either. And backyard breeders do not have any type of health guarantee for the puppies. And basically, most of the time it's like if you have the money, you can have the dog type of situation for backyard breeders or puppy mills. Now, sometimes backyard breeders will give away puppies for free to people they know. Um, and that is very common. Um, that ties into the next point, which is cheaper prices. 
with backyard breeders, the prices will be cheaper because most of the time they're trying to sell the dogs to people they know. Sometimes not, like when they put it in the paper or Craigslist, they might have um, puppies that none of their friends wanted or something like that, but they're trying to sell the remainder of the puppies, but they know that the puppies don't have paper, so they're not going to charge a lot of money for them. And if you're looking for a small breed puppy, you should never pay under $1,200. Now, larger breeds may be on the less expensive side anyway, like Labs and Golden Retrievers. Those are a dime a dozen here in the United States, even with the American Kennel Club. Um, the Labs have been one of the most popular breeds in the U.S. for many, many years. So they, you could possibly get a, a dog from a show breeder that's pet quality for a little less than $1,000, but usually the puppies from a backyard breeder will be very cheap. Now puppy mills can go either way. Puppy mills will sometimes try to make you think that the puppy they're giving you is really high quality, so they will try to get more money out of you, whereas most of the time backyard breeders won't do that. But I've also seen puppy mills charge um, less than a thousand dollars for puppies. Um, again with backyard breeders, sometimes you can't meet the parents or they will offer to meet you in a parking lot somewhere. They'll bring you your dog, like if you wanna meet in a halfway point or something. Um, but I have seen cases where you, with a backyard breeder, you can go and visit the, the puppies and the mom. So that can happen. Um, I see this most with backyard breeders. I guess puppy mills could do this, but a lot of puppy mills will try to act like they're a reputable business, so they won't do this. But backyard breeders will, sometimes let their puppies go to their new homes before eight weeks old, which is a huge no-no. Puppies should never leave their mother and their litter mates before they are eight weeks old, no matter what breed it is. This can happen with puppy mills, but it can happen with backyard breeders too. And sometimes backyard breeders will lie to you. Like, especially if you don't know this person, they will lie and say, oh, the mother abandoned them the mother refuses to feed them and the puppies are only five weeks old. So they will guilt trip you into getting your puppy at five weeks old and you not questioning it. And so you get your puppy at five weeks old and this is bad because puppies need the socialization. Between the ages of like six to 12 weeks, they are learning how to speak dog from their mom and their litter mates. So that's why they need to stay with their mom and their litter mates longer because it's for socialization purposes. And without this, they can develop behavioral problems later in life if they're not properly socialized. Um, another thing that um, I've seen puppy mills use this word too, but backyard breeders use these words a lot is the words mini, teacup, imperial, throwback for, the, for Pomeranians. Like I've seen these words used so many times with backyard breeders. And the first word I'm gonna address is the teacup word. Teacups are mostly used with Yorkies and Pomeranians. I'm gonna tell you right now that with Yorkies and Pomeranians, there is no difference in size. There is one standard. They don't come in different sizes. There is one standard for Yorkies one standard for Pomeranians. The Yorkie should weigh four to seven pounds and the Pomeranian should weigh three to seven pounds, but they don't come in different sizes. So what these breeders are doing is they are breeding the smallest dogs of their litters together to get these teeny tiny puppies. So what that means is they're not breeding to the AKC standard. They're trying to breed smaller and smaller dogs and this can lead to many health problems later in life. A lot of really teeny tiny dogs um, don't live as long because of their health problems. Um, the word imperial is used with Shih Tzus. This is basically the same as the teacup word for Yorkies and Pomeranians. They're basically breeding smaller Shih Tzus to get a smaller dog. And this is not good a lot of times because some of them will try to charge you more money because the dog is smaller. Do not pay more money for a smaller dog because you're paying more money for a dog that's gonna have more health problems and it's gonna cause you more problems in the long run. Now the word mini can also be used with Pomeranians, but there's no mini Pomeranians. Now miniature Schnauzers and miniature Poodles are breeds. Those words are in 
Miniature is in the standard for miniature poodles and miniature schnauzers. And those are just two that I can think of. Also the miniature American Shepherd. Those words are in there. Th those are part of the standard, but they are not part of the standard for other breeds. So before you get a breed, you need to read the standard. Now I'm gonna bring up the throwback word for Pomeranians because you know, Pomer in the Pomeranian world, people are starting to realize that teacup is not a good word, but throwback is not a good word either because this means that the person is not breeding to the standard. They're breeding the dogs larger than they are supposed to. And most of these throwback dogs, they don't look like Pomeranians. Their ears are too big, their noses are too long, and they can weigh anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds. Pomeranians are small lap dogs. They should weigh between, the average Pomeranian weighs, weighs like five or six pounds. And show breeders of Pomeranians do not have dogs that weigh 20 and 30 pounds as adults. It does not happen. These backyard breeders are breeding their larger dogs because larger dogs have more puppies. A dog that only weighs five or six pounds might only have two or three puppies in a litter. A dog that weighs 20 to 30 pounds could have anywhere from five to seven puppies or even more. So that is why they are keeping their larger dogs and we should not stand for the breeding of larger dogs just as we shouldn't stand for the breeding of smaller dogs because they're not breeding to the standard. Another way to spot a backyard breeder or a puppy mill is designer dogs. So any type of doodle, the palm ski, those are the biggest ones I can think of because good breeders of poodles and good breeders of Pomeranians and Huskies do not allow those crosses to happen because it doesn't do any good for the breed and they're not doing the health testing on the dogs anyway. So they're just breeding a mutt and they're charging you an astronomical price for a mutt. Another way to recognize a puppy mill or a backyard breeder is the type of registry they use. Show breeders register all their dogs with the American Kennel Club. That is a very responsible registry here in the United States. The backyard breeders and puppy mills will use a registry here in the United States called the CKC, which stands for Continental Kennel Club. And they will do this so that they say their puppy has papers. And when a lot of people don't, like I said, they don't do any research on the dog. So when they, when they say, oh, the puppy has papers, they think they're getting a high quality dog. When in reality, the Continental Kennel Club will literally register any dog. It doesn't matter what breed or mix or anything. You can regis register the litter and they'll send back papers to you, even though the papers aren't worth anything. Now this is different from the CKC in Canada, which is called the Canadian Kennel Club, and that is a reputable registry. So the final way I'm gonna talk about backyard breeders and puppy mills is other colors that aren't recognized by the AKC. And there's a few breeds that have these. One I'm gonna talk about, the first one I'm gonna talk about is the Yorkie. The Yorkshire Terrier, the AKC, says that they are sh that they should come in black and tan. That is it. As the dog ages, it will turn to blue and tan. So it'll be like a silvery gray color because Yorkies are supposed to have a silky coat. So, but you know, um, backyard breeders are breeding what they call the party Yorkie. And party color dogs is where the dog is mostly white but also has spots of another color. Party Yorkies do not fit the standard. If you have a party Yorkie, it is not purebred. It isn't because Yorkies should only have black and tan markings. That is it. There are no other colors that are allowed for this particular breed. So if you have a party Yorkie, it was probably bred with Maltese somewhere in its line. And so if you see anywhere that it's a party Yorkie, that is a backyard breeder trying to sell a dog. Another one is white miniature schnauzers. Now in Europe, white miniature schnauzers are allowed. In the United States though, they are not allowed. So if you see a breeder who is breeding white miniature schnauzers, 
that is a backyard breeder because they are not breeding to the standard of the dogs unless they are showing the dogs in Europe or another kennel club and not going through AKC. The next one I'm gonna talk about which is similar is the party colored poodle. So party colored poodles are not allowed in the AKC. The only colors that are allowed for any of the poodles in AKC are solid white, solid black, and solid red. Those are the only three colors. In the United States, most of the time if you see phantom poodles or black and tan or merle or party, most of the time it's a backyard breeder unless the dogs that they're um, breeding are registered with the UKC, which is the United Kennel Club, or they're showing them in Europe or somewhere where those colors are allowed. Because backyard breeders get their hands on those colors and then they think that they can make extra money by selling these rare dogs when they're just selling you a dog that could potentially be really unhealthy because they didn't do health testing or anything. They're just breeding the dog just for color and not for health or temperament which is where it comes in. Now there are party miniature schnauzers as well. Those are not recognized in any kennel club that I know of, any reputable one, even in Europe. So again, with party colored miniature schnauzers, if you see those, then it's probably a backyard breeder or a puppy mill. And the last one I'm gonna talk about is the French Bulldog. Blue French Bulldogs are not recognized by the AKC. And what I mean by blue is this color is actually more like gray, which blue French Bulldogs are not allowed to be shown, but the AKC still registers them. But you, you should be looking for a breeder who shows because they're proving their breeding stock. So for me, when I'm looking for a breeder and they don't show, I automatically don't consider them. So show breeders for Frenchies are not breeding for that color because it's they're not allowed to be shown. So most of the time, most of the time, if you see a blue Frenchie, it's from a backyard breeder. So all the information I just told you about backyard breeders and puppy mills is everything that I found in my own research, researching breeders over the years, and I've been in multiple dog groups for multiple different breeds. And this is the information that I have found and I wanted to share it with you so that you can do your own research and be prepared. That is going to wrap up part one of how to get, how to get a dog and how to pick a good breeder. That is everything I have for you in this part. That is part one. If you are interested, you can follow us on Instagram at finscalesfluffytails. And Pascal also has his own Instagram. That is Pascal underscore the underscore axolotl. And um, I will catch you guys on the next video.